we are going to look at a very simplified uh, call flow signaling procedure. Uh, the registration is also known as the attach procedure. Let's look at the network architecture. Uh, if you remember, there are uh, two types of core network uh, for every mobile. So there is a circuit switched and there is a packet switch. Circuit switched is uh, covered by MSC in 2G and 3G networks. In 4G, you only have packet switch. So in 2G and 3G, you have the SGSN and GGSN for the packet switched, whereas uh, the core network in 4G is packet switched only. And this is a simplified uh, network architecture where you can see you have the access network, right? Which it would which would be the node B, uh, RNC plus node B uh, in 3G. In 4G, it would be the E node B. Uh, in uh, 2G, it would be the BSC and the BTS. And you have the core network. Now, the main thing to remember is the device or the UE needs to always communicate to the core network. The access network is just a means by which it can communicate with the core network. So as I said, the device or the UE needs to let the core network know that it is switched on and active. And this procedure is known as registration. The UE can register individually to the CS and PS core networks. But most modern networks allow combined registration or combined attach, whereby the UE can register only to the PS network and the PS network informs the CS network that the UE is active. So if you look at this simplified network architecture, the device or the UE can register to the CS core network as well as the PS core network. But as I said, generally in most uh, modern UEs, uh, in the most modern networks, the device will register to the PS network and the PS network will inform the CS core network that uh, the UE is registered. Before we go further, let's quickly look at the identities uh, which will uh, come into picture. And it's always good to know these identities. So each mobile phone or each UE or each device you have contains an identity known as IMEI, International Mobile Equipment Identity. Uh, if you have a smartphone, you can type star hash 06 hash uh, on the dialing pad and you will get your IMEI. You also have a SIM inside your device and the subscriber identity module it contains the IMSI, International Mobile Subscriber Identity. It contains your mobile number, which is the MSISDN number. And it also contains secret keys for authentication with the network. Now, these secret keys are known, uh, are used for authentication as well as for security procedure. Uh, we will look at where these keys are stored in the network later. But the, these keys are stored in the SIM. And there only the operator knows how to access these keys and what these keys are. You cannot find out what these keys are. Also, during the call, uh, during the operation uh, of registration, the mobile uses temporary identities called TIMZ, Temporary Mobile Subscriber Identity. And these TIMZs are used so that no one can actually find out the true identity of a mobile. This is an additional uh, privacy, privacy procedure. So when the UE is switched on, right, it starts listening uh, for uh, synchronization channels. So in 2G, you have synchronization channel. In 3G, you have the primary and the secondary synchronization channel. In 4G, you have the primary synchronization signal and the secondary synchronization signal. In addition, you have some additional reference signals. 
So the device starts listening uh, to the synchronization signals and this way it can identify the cell timing and the frame timing. And once it has identified the cell and the frame timing, it is uh, it is uh, it can actually read the system information. Uh, it can read the system information uh, from this particular network. So once it has read the system information, it will use the common channel and connect to the access network. Send a message to the access network saying, "Hello, I am UE1." Right? I'm just uh, using an example saying, hello, I am UE1. Now, the problem with common channels are any UE that wants to communicate with the access network for the first time, right? as in when it's in idle mode, it will use the common channel. So there is a good chance that this particular message from this particular UE might clash with another UE, which is trying the same thing. And sometimes this can cause problems when the network is busy because everybody's UE is trying to use the same common channel, right? And actually the message doesn't reach the access network. Anyway, assuming that this message reaches the access network, the access network will respond saying, hello, can you use this particular dedicated channel? Once the UE receives this message, it can use set up this dedicated channel and communicate back on the dedicated channel now saying like hey thanks I'm all set up once the UE is connected to the access network now it can communicate with the core network so it will send a message uh, which is the first message generally which is the attach message right to let the PS core know that it's uh, active and it wants to attach to the PS core network so the PS core network will say okay you are saying that you are UE1. Uh, please authenticate yourself against a vector. Now, a ve this this vector is basically uh, information like it's uh, uses some the secret. So, as I mentioned earlier, the secret keys from the device side or on the UE side is stored in the SIM card, but on the core network, it's stored in. Uh, what is known as either the HLR, the home location register, or the HSS, the home subscriber server. Most of the modern networks have the home subscriber server. And these secret keys, uh, authentication keys, uh, which is the authentication algorithm keys and uh, the ciphering and integrity protection keys, which is generally referred to as the security procedure keys, they're all stored in the, the authentication center. So the core network will actually uh, query the authentication center, find out the key, calculate something, and it will create a vector. And it will send this vector to the UE to, and say like, hey, if you're really this particular UE, then use this vector and send me a response back. The UE should actually use that vector, create an authentication response, and send it back to the core network saying here this is my authentic authentication response now assuming that the authentication response was fine and all successful the ps core network will tell the access network saying hey i actually uh, trust this ue and uh, it's authenticated itself so please establish uh, security procedures so the security procedures will be established between the access network and the UE. And once that's done, the access network will inform the, the core network that the security has been established. Once the security has been established, the PS core will send an attach accept message to the UE. And in that attach accept message, it will also provide a temporary identity. The UE will respond with an attach complete message. As soon as the core network receives an attach complete message, it will inform the CS core network saying, hey, this uh, UE1 is now connected to us. 
and that's the very simple attach procedure uh, hope uh, it was clear and you understood uh, if there are any queries uh, please feel free to get in touch via comments thank you